Hello, welcome back to At the Kitchen Table. I am Faustina Andrews and I'm glad you're here. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you who are returning, thank you for your continued um, support. I want to, uh, as always, invite you all to share, 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 share this word of God. I believe the Lord is blessing us with, uh, with this word and you know, if we're being blessed, we need to pass that blessing along. Today we're going to be talking um, from Leviticus, the 20th chapter, verses 7 and 8. Um, and we're going to go over that just a little bit. Um, it says, um, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. He says, And, be, um, and ye shall keep my statutes, and do them. And I am the Lord which sanctify you. Amen. So we want to talk about sanctifying ourselves. That's it. Sanctifying ourselves. Sanctifying. Making a conscious decision, a very deliberate decision that you're going to do those things that are right in the eyes of the Lord. You're going to separate yourself. Pull out. Pull away from. Become separate and set apart for the master's use. Whatever it is that God um, desires from our lives we're going to sanctify ourselves and put ourselves in a mindset put ourselves in a posture to be used of him what does that look like um, it looks like whatever whatever the word of God is telling us now when we look into the 20th chapter when it first begins in the book of Leviticus God begins to talk to them about the children about um, spreading their seeds of a mom molach he begins to say not only about the person that the man who spreads the seeds of mom molach but for those that are on the outside looking in and watching this and what they don't do and if they don't address it that God himself is going to address it <clears throat> with the surety so God is just setting things in order and so then right before that seventh verse in a sixth verse it goes on to um, then warn us for anybody that is going to go and seek out and run behind those that do dev divinations and run behind wizards and God um, tells us you know that he's totally against that and then that's punishment for that and then he goes right on to say sanctify yourself he puts the responsibility on us he says look he said if you sanctify yourself he said and if you um, keep my statue and do them don't just have possession of them in other words don't just have the knowledge of the statutes of God but we have to be find ourselves doing it I know it seems like almost every time I'm coming to you I'm, I'm saying almost the identical same thing with the backup of a different scripture and it just goes to validate the point that God is making it our responsibility to come out and to separate ourselves he's calling us to a place of clean living to holiness it's just no way in the world that we can name the name of, of God and continue to um, engulf ourselves and embody in ourselves in the cares and the lust of this flesh, the things that we desire to do. But when we're called into the family of God, when we accept that invitation, what we are accepting is to do things God's way. We're accepting his, his whole word to, to align ourselves with the word of God. And we do this so that we will bring glory to God and so that we would be able, as we're bringing glory to him, then we are able to reach others by the life that we're living, by our lifestyles. Not by what we're saying, but what we're doing. Remember, to not only keep the statutes, but also to do them. I believe that's the reason why he says that. You know, we can say that we're keeping something. In other words, we've memorized it. We can recite it. But then to do it is a, is a totally different thing. And he, he tells us then, later on in the very tail end of the 8th chapter, he said, then I'll be your God. He said, he, no, he says, for I am your Lord God, and I will sanctify you. In other words, you have to get yourself, your mind and your heart in a place of sanctification. Once you do that, then God will see your words. He will see it by you reciting being able to keep his statue but also he'll recognize that you are doing his statue then he says i'll come in and i'll do the hard work what is that hard work he'll come in and he'll he'll bring 
the fullness of salvation into our life. He'll come in and he'll allow his spirit to dwell on the inside of us so that it will allow us, amen, to um, accomplish the things that we are here to do. So we need to sanctify ourselves. We need to make a deliberate, conscious decision every day of our lives, throughout the day, that we're going to do things God's way not our own way. The Bible says there's a way that seems right unto a man. He said, but the end thereof is death. One translation say it's destruction. So um, one place reads that it's destruction. So that lets you know that your ways, your thoughts, they're not good enough. Your righteousness is not good enough. But we must return back to the, the laws and the commandments of God. We must return back to them if we're going to be of any use in this world for the sake of God's kingdom. We must return back to a place of sanctification, of deliberate everyday thinking, of deliberate everyday posturing ourselves to come out, come out of, of our lust, the lust of our flesh, come out of anything that's unclean, come out of any situation or any um, place that we will find ourselves in that does not bring glory to God, but it, but it weakens the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got to come out, deliberately sanctify ourselves, deliberately sanctify our lives. We got to come out and be deliberate in our day-to-day -day walk that we are bringing glory to, to the name and the gospel of Jesus Christ, be deliberate in our walk every day so that if we don't speak an audible word to anybody, but just the way that we are carrying ourselves, we will be recognized as the people of God, sanctify ourselves to the point to where when we are handling our day-to-day -day affairs, that we are representing the kingdom of God. Even in our disagreements, we are so sanctified, we are so deliberate in our consecration unto Him that even in disagreements that we are representing Him well in the ways that we, we um, handle those situations. We are going to have life situations, but we must be sanctified. We must be deliberately consecrated, deliberately affectionate towards the things of God, uh, deliberately allowing the Word of God to be alive in our lives so that n nobody that never hears an audible voice or sound come out of our mouths will be able to look upon our countenance and the way that we carry ourselves and know that we are the people of God. And if we sanctify ourselves, if we consecrate ourselves unto the things of God, He will come in and He will be our God and He will sanctify us. He will complete the places that we can't go in. He will complete it. Why? Or uh, how will He do it? by allowing the power of the risen Christ to dwell on the inside of us and to rest and to rule and to abide in us. So I want to encourage us today that we must, we absolutely must sanctify ourselves. It is time, people of God, that we consecrate ourselves unto the ways of God. We consecrate ourselves unto a holy life that a dying and a hopeless world may see that there is hope through Christ Jesus, there is hope in his statutes, there is hope in the love of Jesus Christ, there is hope in the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And his word is very much alive because Jesus is alive and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father right now making intercession for you and for I. So sanctify ourselves, be deliberate in how you live your life until the glory of God. Until next time, I'll meet you back at the kitchen table. I would appreciate so much if you would like it, if you like the video. I would appreciate very much if you would leave comments. I would also appreciate if you would share this video um, with someone, and especially those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins, that they will know that He still has His arms stretched wide open, beckoning men, saying, Come. Come, come unto me, all ye that are he uh, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's still saying, "Come." So invite everybody that you run across. The time is drawing now. Invite them to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to extend the invitation to to you today. If you don't know Him in the pardon of your sins, just get in a very honest prayer with Him and make the confession of faith, and then begin to get into the Word of God. I always like to tell um, 
born again, new born again believers to go into the book of Proverbs because the book of Proverbs will tell you how to live your day to day life. It will tell you how to conduct your business and how to do it God's way. And so it's a very good place to start off um, so that we know how we ought to conduct ourselves in the affairs, in our daily affairs. But I want everybody to be encouraged. Remember, those of you who named the name of Christ, that it's time for sanctification. Until next time, be blessed, and I'll meet you back here at the kitchen table. Thank you so much. God bless.